She was two, over two, so I was able to rationalize with her and just say, you know, you have to be gentle with mommy. There's a baby in the tummy, and, and mommy's, mommy's boobies are a little bit sore, so just be gentle, and she'd be like, okay, mommy, okay. Balloons, bazookas, boob, boobies, bosoms, boulders, cans, hooters, knockers, melons, honkers, jugs, rack, tatas, tits, torpedoes, guns, bust, doorknobs, coconuts, and our favorite one, the girls. Welcome to the All About Breastfeeding Show, where your host, Lori, highlights mothers just like yourself and goes beyond the surface questions and digs deep so they share not only their joys and happiness in their daily breastfeeding life, but also their pain and struggles and how they worked through them. Episode number 172. Welcome to All About Breastfeeding, the place where the girls hang out. I am your host, Lori Jill Eisenstadt. IBCLC, which stands for International Board Certified Lactation Consultant, and I help moms with breastfeeding. We are here with, believe it or not, part three of my interview with Jen Foster, mom, IBCLC, and tandem nurser. We did say at the beginning of our interview that we will have so much to talk about. And guess what? We did. So much so that I needed to divide the show up into three parts. If you're a new listener or have skipped around listening to different shows that resonated most with you, and you are listening to this show, but you have not heard part one and part two, I suggest you go back and listen to episode number 169, and 170 of my interview with Jen Foster. Before we get to today's show, I would love to invite you to join our Facebook community where you can connect with Jen and other guests of the show. You will also be connected to a community of like-minded moms who have joined this group to have support from other breastfeeding moms. You'll also find some pretty interesting discussion threads started by members on subjects like, well, let's see, one that's been going on in the last week or two is getting help with your exclusively breastfed baby, getting help with them to take the bottle. I love these discussions that come up from time to time because moms can see that there's no one right way and no magic bottle and no magic nipple. However, there are lots of great tips to share with one another and moms love telling others what work for them, and I am all for that. We need to be creative in our ideas with our parenting lives. I'm also going to have an informal survey on the different pumps that are available and getting your thoughts on what's working best for you and what you are not so happy with. I will collect all the responses and post it in the Facebook community so you can learn what other moms' experiences are. The post that is the most funniest in the last week comes from a member, Ashley, who asks for us to share the songs that you rewrite in your own head to make them about breastfeeding. She tells us one of hers is for the Adele song, Hello, and how she has changed the words to Milkies from the Other Side from Adele's song, Hello. Seriously, I'm not going to sing that. My singing voice is awful, and I thought I would spare my husband, Alan, who edits the show. But go on, search for the four words, All About Breastfeeding Community in Facebook, and then click on the Join button and check out Ashley's post, and you can add your own song to it. Thanks, Ashley, for making my day. A lovely reminder. If you like what you hear and are enjoying the shows, be a good breastfeeding buddy and send a link to the show to your breastfeeding or pregnant friends. Encourage them to check out the archives and download as many shows as they like. You know, all of this is for free and it's great educational information. I don't know about you, but I would have loved to have my hands on all this information when I was pregnant and definitely when I was a new breastfeeding mom. I was isolated out there all alone and I didn't have a clue with what I was doing. And boy, I, even some of the shows like I've done on cluster feeding, 
man, I would have loved to have known that information. Shows on babies and sleep and breastfeeding and frequency of feeding. I was just, you know, going it alone. And I had, I had no one else in my life who breastfed. And so I would have loved these shows. You just can't get some of this information from books. So go on, be a great breastfeeding friend and share the show. All right, let's get going with today's show. Jen, I'm wondering, I know that you said that you have tandem nursed your kids. So I also know that there is some people think that tandem nursing is different things. And so my definition of tandem nursing is to nurse two or more kids at the same time, but that the kids, the babies and the kids are at different ages. And some people think that tandem nursing is nursing twins. So what is your definition? That's a great question. Tandem nursing, I would imagine, um, could be perceived as, you know, nursing two, two infants at once and that theoretically could be nursing twins. I would imagine that that, at least in my mind and in in practice situations as a lactation consultant have been, I've, I've referred to it as tandem nursing. But I can also see how that, you know, nursing two different children of different ages can be more accurately depicted as tandem nursing. So I guess it could be seen from both sides. I would have to probably look up that technical definition. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's interesting because the technical definition is to nurse two kids at the same time who are at different, different ages. Okay. But, you know, do I want to really take it away from a mom of twins who says she's tandem nursing and she's proud (laughs) that she's nursing two babies? Not really. I don't really get so hung up on the terminology like another lactation consultant might, but I really wouldn't. Right. I would agree with that. We just need to support the mom and encourage her and build her up where she's at. Exactly. So for you, was tandem nursing something that you thought about ahead of time or did it just evolve because you you were pregnant and your older, well, your youngest at that time was still nursing? Were you Were you looking forward to it or did you try and wean your youngest child and that part didn't work out? So how did tandem nursing evolve for you? Quite honestly, that's something that I always had wanted to experience. Cool. I'm pretty passionate um, about nursing, you know, breastfeeding lactation. And people call me the lactation nut sometimes because I use my breast milk for many different purposes. (laughs) (laughs) We were quite surprised by the fourth pregnancy. And one of the first things after the shock started to wear off was, I was like, wow, maybe I'll actually get to tandem nurse. And I got so excited about that. It wasn't necessarily planned because I wanted our daughter, Emery, she was two at the time, to, you know, to have her own nursing experience. And if she decided that she was finished prior to the birth of the baby, I didn't want to push that for her to continue. But she was very much all into nursing and wanted to be close and wanted to continue. And so I was very supportive of of that. Of course, it was challenging at times because the belly got bigger. She was used to laying down with mommy and nursing to sleep. And it's a little bit difficult when she gets a princess uh, toddler bed and you're about seven, eight months pregnant and you're trying to lay in the bed (laughs) and nurse her to sleep. I'm trying to picture this. (laughs) It was quite challenging. But I have to say there's a picture um, that my husband actually took the first time of me tandem nursing Emory and Lincoln at once. Lincoln's now seven months old, and it has to be one of the most heart-wrenching, you know, emotional pictures for me because it's just so precious, you know. She's not only, you know, sharing her space that was once kind of hers, <laughs> But she was really, you know, gazing at him and holding his hand and just being so loving. And it just made me realize that, you know, there's there could be so many benefits for the children themselves to be able to tandem nurse together. And, you know, maybe you create more of a bond between each other. And I've, I've noticed that since she's kind of backed off more so on her nursing, she's very supportive and loving and kissing and doting on Lincoln when he is nursing without her nursing at the same time. That's so sweet. I just want to ask you, because I'm curious, when you were nursing, when you were pregnant, Mm -hmm. besides it being some challenging because of the growing belly, Mm -hmm. was there any problems or pain or soreness when she was nursing with 
Like, did it bother your nipples at all? Did they get sore? Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't want to leave out that part because I like right. to tell all the good right. stuff. Right, and, and I agree. I agree. You know, trying to honestly remember back because, you know, there always is that baby brain. I feel like last too long. Yes, I, you know, certainly there was that discomfort, um, you know, being sore. And I did have to speak. You know, she was two, over two. So I was able to rationalize with her and just say, you know, you have to be gentle with mommy. There's a baby in the tummy and, and mommy's, mommy's boobies are a little bit sore. So just be gentle. And she'd be like, okay, mommy, okay. So, you know, it'd, it'd really be kind of more of, of that rationalization. But on my side, it was just so important for me and for her to be able to continue to have that bond and provide it to her that it was kind of braving through it. <laughs> That's what I like for mothers to know. I like, well, there's a couple of things because some mothers don't really know and they have their babies very, very close. And mm -hmm. one of the first things they notice is that their supply is dropping incredibly. Mm -hmm. And if nobody mm -hmm. told them that, they were kind of surprised. And I've worked with lots of moms who have had infertility issues. And so they have started to take some medication or they're just planning on becoming pregnant. They don't realize that their supply is going to drop and their baby mm. may not be old enough that they had planned on weaning them. They just wanted their kids close. And ah, so that's a bit okay. of a shocker. Sure, absolutely. And then the other thing is, is that some people just have no idea how uncomfortable it can be for some mothers. And now I think most of us who overall don't mind it and or look forward to tandem nursing, it really is just another blip on the screen. You, I mean, even you, you see how much you just glossed over that. It's like, oh, yeah, I did. And it was uncomfortable to my belly. But you know what? That first time when they nursed together. So we really do. We have this mind that allows us to forget some of those things. Absolutely. I think, I mean, just the main point of giving birth just the childbirth pain that we endure to have our children, you know, it's it's something that we remember, obviously, soon thereafter, but that fades away as well. You know, right. you remember, you know, yes, it, it was challenging, but at the end, oh, what a precious, <laughs> what a precious gift, what a precious result. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is, and I could just, you know, I never had the opportunity to do that my second wean during my third pregnancy. And at that time, I had absolutely no idea what was going on. He just, at a certain point, he was nursing and very happily. And then over a very, very short period of time, like a day or so, he was like, no more, no more, no more. And, you know, anybody who says you're making that two or three year old nurse was never in a position of nursing a two or three year old. I agree. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree. You cannot make them nurse if they don't want to. I was like, come on, come sit back on mommy's lap. Come on, come sit. Because that was like a relaxation time for me. And he mm -hmm. was just like, nope. And I realized later as I started taking training as a lactation consultant that, uh, you know, there was no more milk and or very little. And my joke was, you know, he would make a face and climb off my lap. And I would say to my husband, like, it's like he acted as if the milk went sour or something. Aww. And I never really <laughs> thought too much about it. But then as I learned about lactation and what happens during the weaning and drying up process is that your milk definitely changes flavor. Mm -hmm, and absolutely. it could actually even get like a salty kind of a taste. Mm -hmm. And years mm -hmm. later, I said, you know what? That's the face he made. Like, oh, I've had too much sour or sweet or salt. And, yes. <laughs> and <laughs> so he couldn't verbalize it then. He was uh, two and a half, almost three, and he just wasn't a big talker. He, it took him a little later to talk. So, yeah, so we kind of forget those things and we go through those stages. So I never got an opportunity to do that because he just self-weaned during the pregnancy. I work with lots of moms who have a concern, even if they're looking forward to it. Now, you had your lactation knowledge behind you, so mm -hmm. I'm going to take a guess that you really weren't concerned about having enough milk and nourishment for your newborn while you were nursing your other child? Well, I was kind of on the other side of the spectrum because of my past situation with, you know, having a, a lower supply with the third, Emery. I actually was more hopeful that if more milk was removed, just the mechanics of lactation, that I would ultimately be able to produce more, especially with different stimulations. 
Mm-hmm. However, we did make a rule that, you know, brother got to nurse first and then sissy got to nurse after. So there were times when they nursed at the same time. However, you know, he would, he would start nursing first and then she would go on the other side. So usually it was, you know, he would nurse on the left and then she would nurse on the right and then we'd switch and that sort of thing. You know, I, I kind of am in a little bit different boat than the vast majority of, of mothers out there, you know, because all women are unique. And again, it's supply and demand. I really wasn't very concerned at all um, in reference to having enough for the newborn. But I, I do feel like, and, and even when I talk with moms that have that concern, of course, you know, reassuring them that their body is able to produce the milk that is demanded of the baby or of the, the babies or the baby and ch- child, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's removed will be made. For, for my particular case and situation, the rule was, you know, baby brother nurses first and then baby sis- then, then Emery can nurse. But they did nurse at the same time, <laughs> just after he nursed on that side. <laughs> I love that you say that in that way because... There does come a time when we can start introducing small degrees of discipline to our children when it comes to nursing, and Mm -hmm. we can talk to them about taking turns, Mm -hmm. and we can talk to them about waiting a little while, waiting until we go home, waiting until your brother is done. So I really like that you brought that up. I, I would love for you to like really just talk from your heart, like what were some of the joys that you really got from tandem nursing? Because it does, as much as we love it, it is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And yet I think it also, there are parts of it that make parenting and mothering easier in certain situations. And you can talk about that. But I also really want to make sure that I have an opportunity to let you express what are some of the joys that you really got out of tandem nursing? Personally, breastfeeding is always my favorite portion of parenting. Um, I cherish that bond and that closeness so much. So, and I feel like that it's, you know, of course, all the evidence behind that and everything. It really brings just a sense of comfort and peace to the, to the infant and to the child as well. You know, it was just so heartwarming to be able to see how, how loved they felt and how comforted they were. And, and the interaction between the two of them. And honestly, it was just, there's, I, I'm at a loss for words as to how to accurately describe it in the way I want to, because it was just an incredible experience. It really, really was. She was a lot more loving and compassionate and understanding than I thought initially, you know, because you, you do hear stories of that there's a battle over who's going to nurse first and that sort of thing. But, you know, she was just a very, very loving Consider it sister, and she wanted to share, you know, what she knew was good with brother. It was just an amazing experience, you know, and I, and I say it was because she's been, like you said, you can't make them nurse, so it's been a little bit since she's decided that she wanted to nurse. Just speaking from the heart, that's probably, you know, the most touching experience that I've I've had, <laughs> absolutely, with the two of them. What would you tell a mother who's she may know that it's something she wants to do, but she's mm-hmm. unsure. She's getting a little flack, a little pressure from husband or other family members. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always want women to do whatever it is that they want to do. And I want them to be strong in their convictions. But we also cannot put aside what some mothers are telling us is that they are feeling the pressure. And it's not necessarily for us to say, just ignore them. I mean, that's such an easy, pat answer. What are some of the things that you would share with a mom who is telling you those concerns that she has? That I can certainly empathize with her. You know, I just as, as much as I loved the tandem nursing, we had family in town. There was a lot of opposition and a lot of, you know, snide comments being made and comments behind my back after she nursed that you're a big girl. You don't need to be, you know, nursing anymore. You're a big girl. You're a big girl. You know, or to me of, well, you you know, now the new baby needs to be there and not the, the older one. And she's a big girl. You don't need the milky. I would really kind of emphasize to the mothers that to educate yourself on the benefits of, of breastfeeding, of extended breastfeeding. Be able to be strong, your own decision. And yes, it is, it's, you know, it's easy to, it's easier said than done in terms of, you know, taking those comments with a grain of salt. 
being strong and knowing that what your decision that you decide to do for your children is what's important in that scenario. In other words, you're the mother, you're the parent. <laughs> and you know, if there's a, if there's you know, a father or partner involved, that's a decision that's been made as, as your family unit. And for those comments that are that are coming, a lot of times, quite honestly, maybe they're not intended to be negative. But as a mother, we often can see that we <laughs> see that as a negative and not supportive. But sometimes just, you know, a simple smile and just saying, you know, thank you for your concern. But I'm really I'm really happy to continue to provide, you know, so and so, um, you know, all these antibodies and nutrients because it still is so important at this age, you know, just little comments like that. But just be, you know, keep your head up and be strong. And if you need a hug, <laughs> you know, get that hug from somebody that you know that's supporting your position. Being confrontational with those that are being negative towards it is not going to solve anything. <laughs> I think that's a great answer. I think, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say it exactly the way you said it, but you had one, I mean, you had a lot of really great things to say, but one of the things that you said was just to, Smile, nod, and say thank you for your concern. However, this this is going to continue to be my plan because this is what we're comfortable with, and I'm happy mm -hmm. to provide the nutrients for my child. And and you know whatever one line or moms can come up with, and just I always tell them just keep saying the same party line because if you try and engage in a in a back and forth, that's when you kind of go down that rabbit hole. Right. And right. and our stomach gets you know naughtier and naughtier. I also talk to moms about this. This is just one of the many different parenting decisions that you're going to have to make. And, and I, I don't think that you're going to want to explain to someone else who's going to be telling you how to feed your baby, you know, regular foods, that you're going to be listening to them or discipline your child and things like that. And this is just one of the many subjects that are going to come up that if you're doing certain things in in view of anybody else, because a lot of people, they're going to have opinions about what you feed your child. They're going to have opinions about how you're disciplining your child in public. And this is just one of the first of many things. And you just kind of, there's a part of you that just has to have a, a couple of lines about how to speak to someone other than outside your, your family unit. And you don't really owe them anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I love how you put that because it's so true. Just because it starts with a nursing comment, believe me, and I'm sure that they notice that during the pregnancy, no matter what number of pregnancy it is, you're going to hear from everybody from A to Z as to what you should and shouldn't be doing and what wearing and doing this and doing that. And, and again, it's just, it's so much about, you know, just educating yourself on what you feel is going to be the best decision for you and your family and being strong and supported in that decision. Because there's always going to be <laughs> chiming from the peanut gallery. <laughs> there's always going to be coming from the peanut gallery. Exactly right. <laughs> That's a good way to think about it. I mean, it just it, it starts in pregnancy. It's like your belly is out there as it's growing for the world to see and like it, I think that's just where it starts, where people they look at that belly and all of a sudden you get all of this unsolicited thoughts and advice. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jen. I mean, you've shared so much of your mothering life, so much of what's happening in your life with breastfeeding from your first baby on up. And I'm thrilled that you were able to feel comfortable enough talking to us about tandem nursing. I find that it is one of those things like like nursing your child past a year that it's kind of in the closet that people they don't like to talk about it a lot because they're afraid of what other people would like to say. And I really need for moms to talk about nursing mm. babies after a year. I need for moms to talk about tandem nursing because it's also something else that mothers don't necessarily get to see in public. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So sometimes that may stop them from moving forward because they sometimes people think, well, is it just me or a very small select person? And I always say, oh, no, I, and I only know this because I work in this business, but there are hundreds and thousands of mothers tandem nursing. You just don't get to see it. 
and you're here about it. So I'm very excited that you're willing to talk to us and share with us and explain what it meant to you. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. And I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and share it with your listeners. And and I just applaud every single mother out there that she's doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Me too. And thank you for saying that. Like a round of applause. Yes. Absolutely. A big, big virtual hugs for all the moms out there who are. Absolutely. I am new. I am in my infancy. I am a work in progress. I am the All About Mothering membership site. I am inviting you to join me in making this new membership site the go-to place for new mothers. I am taking all my years of experience working as a childbirth educator, group facilitator, birth and postpartum doula, and my work as an IBCLC, and I'm rolling it all into this site. I'm pouring all my knowledge into the All About Mothering membership site. I really want to make it exactly what I would have wanted when I was at the beginning of this journey, motherhood. There were so many things I wish I knew, but no one had told me. All the things that I could not get from just any old book on birth and breastfeeding. There were so many things I wish I had known even before conceiving my first baby. For you to become a founding member, you can do so for a nominal fee, and you can become part of an online community where you get to share your mothering life with others soon to be and new mothers. You can offer your wisdom. You can go to the forums. You can post questions. You can respond to people's questions. You can provide insight. You can talk about lessons learned and provide feedback from others. So I can make this a dynamite website along with you for pregnant and new mothers. It makes a great gift for new mothers. Learn more about the All About Mothering membership site and learn how to join us just by going to allaboutmothering.com.